Hey gang, we're back with the final episode, oh I keep pumping my mic with my hat, <clears throat> of Overdin, the return of the Overdin. I've got some news though, I've got some news about it, Um, and I'd like to preface, preface it by saying I am personally devastated by the news, and I am so upset about it. It really bums me out. I already recorded this episode. And it, the entire recording was completely unusable. I think what happened was that I, I had a Windows update. And for whatever reason... That Windows update decided to reset all my default audio devices. So instead of my microphone being the default audio device, then Windows decided, actually, we prefer the webcam being the default audio device. So my webcam was the default, and that screwed up the settings in OBS somehow. I don't know. It was also messed up in Discord as well. <sighs> I don't know what I could have done to fix it. I don't remember setting it to just my default audio device. Anyway. So my mic wasn't, wasn't recording any audio. And it would have been like bad. But I would have still uploaded it. If I just had the webcam audio. Because it doesn't sound that bad. It just sounds like a shitty like gamer mic. The only issue is in OBS. I've disabled... The webcam microphone from recording anything so I just recorded the whole video with absolutely no audio from my mic it's just the game audio and then the webcam of me talking and there's just nothing so I, I just couldn't use it I just couldn't use it I thought about maybe doing a um, like a voiceover like I did for a video in the past where this <laughs> same thing happened um, but I, I, I booted up the game and miraculously, like such a weird coincidence, but when I loaded the save, there was an option to rewind back to the Obra Dinn before you do the bargain chapter. And that's exactly where I left off, uh, when I started the last video. So it's like super lucky in that regard like I that I it was so easy to just rewind I thought I'd have to like like find a save file online to get back to the Obra Dinn or something I was I was so upset by it I'm so upset by it because I did like I mean it was like I felt like I did good in that video you know what I mean I felt like I was I was funny and um there were some good moments that I'll probably go over because I can't let them... I can't just let them go. So I'm going to try and re reenact all my funny, funny moments. I'm ready to go, Popeye. Let's get out of here. How do I leave? Okay. It's doing it. But yeah, I'm just... So I know everything that's going to happen. Like, I've already finished the game. Um, but... <clears throat> Obviously, I have to finish the series. I have to, I have to do the last episode because not everybody that's watching this has already played the game. So I feel like it would be letting down some people if if I didn't post the last bit of the game. Um. Anyway, so first video, first take I did with <laughs> when the camera was cinched down on the guy's face, I made a. I made a joke about it being Looney Tunes, so that was one. That was one that was lost forever, and I thought that was pretty funny. I did the pew sound effect as it closed. All right. Anyway, let's let's read the book. 1807, the Honorable East India Company. Insurance assessment for the good ship Obra Dinn, victim of calamitous events at sea. Prepared by the Company Office of Investigation. Ship. Damaged in Squall, Atlantic. Sunk in Storm, Falmouth. Payout claimed 20,000 
I think that's pounds. I don't know. I don't I don't get this though because the ship didn't sink the ship is still here so I don't know what it means sunk in storm Falmouth um and then likewise for the cargo all cargo lost payout claimed 5,000 pounds but all the cargo is still on the ship uh, the cargo and the ship uh, were fine so I don't know what these are talking about Cargo crown, all cargo lost, payout claim for restitution, 3,000 pounds. <clears throat> and then we get to the the crew members, which I'll, I'll start skipping through, but I'll kind of pause on the notable ones. Uh, Robert Witterell, suicide with gun, criminal findings, murder of crewmate, four. Estate forfeited to the crown. William Huskut, first mate. Fate, shot gun. Robert Witterell. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny, estate fine, 25 pounds. Edward Nichols, shot gun by C-10. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate 2, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo, estate fine, 100 pounds. Martin Parrott, fate unknown. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor, exceptional performance of duties. A state awarded outstanding wages and reward, 90 pounds. Um, John Davies, Alfred Klestel, exceptional performance of duties. Yeah, poor guy. He was he was one of the good ones. Old Klestel. Charles Minor. He murdered a crewmate? I don't remember that, actually. Yeah, I don't remember him murdering anybody, actually. I guess he must have, but... Oh! Are they talking about him getting... Him accidentally shooting the guy through the wall? While he was fighting the crabs? That wasn't murder. He he had no idea the guy was even there. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't matter. He's, he's long dead, but... Uh, he shouldn't be getting fined for that. Oh, I guess he's not. It's expense claimed. Henry Evans is alive in Africa. Findings of demerit. Abandonment of crew and vessel. State awarded outstanding wages. 50 pounds. Okay, so not too bad for him. And then James Wallace died. Extraordinary valor. Winston Smith. Extraordinary valor. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he definitely had extraordinary valor there. And Marcus Gibbs, they they're just they don't even say shit about him. Just here's his here's his fucking cash. But he I feel like I feel like you could say he had extraordinary valor. It just went along with extraordinary stupidity. Uh, but damn, if he wasn't cool, if he wasn't badass. Christian Wolf, Alice Waiter. A weator. I don't know how to pronounce that. Finley Dalton, Edward Spratt, Abigail Hoskett, no claim made. Nunzio Pasqua, no claim made. Emily Jackson, alive in Africa. Oh, she, she also murdered the crewmate. But, I mean, like again, that was self-defense. That guy was, what was his name? Vol, Volkov or something? I don't remember. He, he murdered a guy right in front of her, and he was about to go murder her. That was self-defense, man. She should not be getting fined. And then also abandonment of crew and vessel. They're passengers. <laughs> they don't owe anything to the crew. Maybe, I mean, maybe like ship laws were different back then. Maybe if you're a passenger on the ship, then you have a duty to the ship. I don't know. Yep, yep, people dying. Philip Dahl, unknown, criminal findings, murder of crewmate, yep. Peter Milroy, Omid Ghoul. I guess if you want to look through all these um, in more detail, Volkov, that's the guy. 
he murdered a guy and he tried to murder a bunch of other people. Alarkis Toporov. Henry Brennan. I feel like Henry Brennan was kind of my favorite character. Just because, like, at the very start of the game, when I first started playing, the very first memory I went into, he seemed like he was just a bad guy. And then slowly over time, as I kept going through memories and figuring out the story, uh, it actually seems like he was a pretty good guy. Not the best guy, but he seemed like he was, he was pretty noble, um, pretty honorable, and he did what he could. And I think that those shells, I don't think it ever explicitly explained this in the game. But I think those shells like were like the one ring. I might have already I might have already said this in another video, I don't know. But um I feel like he just got corrupted by the shells at the end or something cuz it just didn't make sense. He he seemed like a good guy. He was like doing his best to to help people and like defend the innocents and he was you know following orders the whole way through and then just at the end randomly he's like give me those shells captain so i don't know okay preliminary draft of this assessment has been approved by the royal trade guarantor total claim twenty nine thousand two hundred and eighty five on behalf of on behalf of the Honorable East India Company, I certify all statements as accurate and declare this matter closed in its entirety. M M Gam M Gam. That's my name. That was my name the whole time. M Gam. Pocket watch remains in your possession. The book returns to its original owner, Henry Evans, in Morocco, as requested. I guess that's us shipping the book off. One year later. It took so long for us to get any word back. Who is it? I seem to be bound to my chair. Oh God, I've been sitting here for a year. Just contemplating the memories, waiting for my package. Patricia, is that my package? Give it to me. Fuck you! I'm opening it right now. Thank you. Little bat. All right. What do we got here? I have no. I cannot read that at all. This was another part that I'm like super sad. Got lost cuz <laughs> I <laughs> it's still funny to me as soon as I saw the package I was like I just this idea popped into my head uh, that that he, that he <laughs> it's still funny to me but it doesn't it doesn't make sense and I don't know why I thought it or why it's so funny to me but that <laughs> <laughs> that Henry Evans, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't like, he didn't care, <laughs> he didn't care about, um, like resolving the mystery. Like he forgot that he promised to give me the last chapter or whatever. <laughs> and he he just sends like his dead monkey in the package, and the letter it just says like, <laughs> oh no, my monkey died, and you're my only friend. <laughs> <laughs> um 
and then, and then re reading the letter instead it says chief inspector i write to you with the unfortunate news that dr evans has passed away <laughs> he he should he succumbed to his illness shortly after receiving your package he, he bequeathed to you upon his death his pet monkey <laughs> I hope it arrived in good health. <laughs> it's just like sealed. <laughs> it's just sealed in an airtight package. <laughs> just the whole monkey they sent to me. But it doesn't say that. But that's that was that was a joke I made the first time before I even knew like anything about the package or anything. And I was cracking up like way too much. I could barely even get through it. Uh, anyway, it says, He was very pleased with your correspondence and asked that his gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you, along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us that remain, the Oberdin is a distant memory and a dreadful chapter in our lives that we wish, for to, wish to forget. Do not write back. Regards, Jane Bird. <laughs> so there you go. And then we've got the book. This tale belongs to you now. Please finish it. So there's that. And then like the, the rest of the book is all just exactly how we left it. Yep. Nothing new. Except this is like opened up now. So we can solve the last few fates. And then in this package, this is when I really, like, freaked out. Because, well, I'll just... <laughs> it's the monkey. It's not the whole monkey. It's not the entire monkey. But the fact that <laughs> he actually did send me the monkey. I was, like, I was going crazy. But, yeah, he, he sent me the monkey to use the pocket watch on. So the monkey must have died on the ship. Damn. Nothing good. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he just... He just blasted him. Oh, that poor monkey. Oh, that poor, poor monkey. So yeah, it turns out he... He just... He sent the monkey in and then shot him. Just so that... I guess he... He always had the pocket watch. Um... And so he knew that, like, he'd be... Or somebody would be able to, um use the pocket watch to to get the monkey but oh you know what that's why the rope is on there i i never even thought about it but he tied the rope to the monkey shoved him in the hole and <laughs> shot him and then pulled the monkey back in and cut its hand off maybe he used the pocket watch maybe he already knew the whole story In the lazarette, a friendly but not entirely pleasant monkey companion was sacrificed in the pursuit of knowledge. That's... That's so sad. That poor monkey. And Paul Moss was with him. Before he got stabbed by Volkov during the escape. So that's the the end of the bargain, obviously, because everybody in here is already dead. And then I think, yeah, it forces us to to do uh, this guy first. A third shell. The captain didn't toss them all. Leave it. Help me lift this. Well, you free. Give it 
So sad. Such a sad death. And a really weird one, too. So they hauled <clears throat> a mermaid out. And immediately. Whoa, what the fuck? I wanna be. Wait, where's the. Oh, it has to kick me out of the book first. That's right. So they gave the um, mermaid the shell. I'm trying to avoid looking at um, the, the mermaid's body. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've done a very good job at it, but I don't know, like, if YouTube like detects that kind of stuff. I don't want to get in trouble. It's probably fine. I'm probably just being paranoid. Okay, so he. He got spiked. Oh shit, that's not right. So they walk in. They're all fine and healthy and alive. <clears throat> and this guy goes, A third shell, Captain didn't toss them all. He goes, Leave it. Help me with this. And then right here, this little dot here, he got slapped with the mermaid tail and gets spiked three times in the chest and gut. And he goes, Stop, wait. We're here to set you free. Give it the shell. And uh, the other guys are just like, they don't care. They don't care. They're not like, oh my gosh, you just got stabbed. We got to help you. They just, they're like, eh? Do it. Hoist it out. Blah, blah, blah. And then, and then the other guy's like, get the tail, boy. Let's, let's get a move on. He knows what he's doing. Look at him. He's fine. He's got his, he's got his, uh, he's got his spikes. He's having a good time over there. And then he just fucking dies. But the fact that there were three shells the whole time is really confusing. Um. Yeah, so that's sad. Martin Parrot, he, uh. He got dealt a, a shitty hand there. And, and she's taken the, um. The shell with her. They like gave her the shell and she's just clutching it. Boom. There's the captain. That's what he went down below deck. Like when when his wife was lo looking for him during the doom. This is what he was down here doing. Just stabbing the shit out of the mermaid. And this is um Philip Dahl. He was the first one sent in here along with the three mermaids. And uh he somehow got a hold of a third shell. And it... It, like, destroyed his arm. A captured beast fought against its jailer and was speared for the trouble. I'll kill every last one of you monsters. Withdraw the tr The Kraken. The Traken. So, probably, correctly, the captain thought that the mermaids were responsible for the Kraken. 
and the like crab monsters. He's just going to town. He's just going to town on him. He is pissed. I mean, I would be too. It's it's nice that he's he cares so much about his people, I guess. I don't know why they even like put them in the hold to begin with though. I guess because they were just treasures, like, like what, um, like what Nichols said when he first rode them back. Why Nichols brought them aboard? Because they're like these strange, crazy creatures, and they could probably bring them back to England or whatever, and and put them in a museum or a zoo <laughs> or something, and and be famous for the discovery. Probably make a lot of money. That's probably why they they kept the the uh, mermaids but it cost them they probably didn't expect the mermaids to be able to just summon a kraken an unholy creature's defiant shrieks were greeted with a fatal bullet all right well there's not much to that there's not much to that now we get to do philip doll This part I don't understand at all. What's this? Quicksilver. Oh, oh. 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 I good. I mean, good. That's so sad. That line is so sad. He sounds so sad. He sounds like he's in so much pain and then he just dies. He just dies probably from shock, I would imagine. But like, what in the fuck is going on here? They've got this treasure chest from the Forbosans. In the bottom drawer was just one shell in like a little pouch. Or, you know, like a little satin indent or whatever. And that's like fine and normal and cool. But then in the top, there's like this just pool of quicksilver, which I think is mercury. But don't quote me on that. Maybe it's just like some magical substance that's not real. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Given the circumstances, it seems like it's hydrochloric acid or something. But, um, and then there's just another shell in the chest in the Quicksilver for some reason. And I don't understand that. And how did the Formosan guy, like, what did he do to the mermaids originally when he stuck his hand in? He must have been, like, reaching for that shell. And then he did something to knock out the mermaids. Uh, and then he died the same way without pulling the shell out of the chest. I don't really get it. I don't get what happened there. But I think it's just like something that it's not really that important. It's just like up for interpretation. You, you're allowed to just imagine whatever you want there but there we go that's all 60 crew members the book is done the book is fully done that's all there is that's all the information we'll ever get anything anything you want to know further you just have to postulate and and guess at um but yeah so i guess let's let's just do like a quick recap that sounds good All right, so I don't really know what the uh, Formosans were doing. I don't know what the Formosans, why the Formosans had the shell. I don't know why they were transporting the shells by boat 
that seems like a really dumb idea. I think I would have thought wherever they were trying to take them to, it'd be better just to cross the English Channel and and take them by land through Europe instead of going out into the ocean where they obviously knew that monsters would attack them at. <laughs> like, oh, what the fuck? And it's not like those three mermaids b patrolled the entire ocean. They must have known, like, where the shells came from and that they were going through the area where the mermaids were. I don't, I don't know. I don't get the Formosan steel. But maybe there's, like, maybe it's, like, comes from a, a book or, like, an old legend that I just don't know about. But maybe this is this whole game is like referencing some old legend or something that that has more information, or maybe not. Maybe it's like I said, you just have to. It's just up to you to to postulate and like come up with your own theories about uh about all that shit. I don't know. I don't know. But they set sail from I guess England. Uh, with the Formosans, with their treasure, with the shells in the chest. Um, and then, you know, shit starts going bad instantly. A few people die of, of sickness and accidents. They kill a cow. And then, I guess, <sighs> Nichols. I don't really get what's going on with Nichols either. He must have known that the Formosans were royalty and that they had something really precious, some really precious cargo. And so I think here he was probably knocking the guy out, the guard, to, like, take a look and maybe to steal it at that point as well. And then Nunzio Pasqua saw him and he had to kill Nunzio. And then he, he was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then he rounded up his accomplices and then they, um, oh shit, no, that's, that's not the order of events. Uh, but he killed Nunzio to, to cover his ass, and then they just blamed it on the guard, who was knocked out. But he must have gotten a good look at what the treasure was, and was like, oh shit, these are some good goodies. And then after the murder, then he rounded up his accomplices, and was like, we could get rich, fellas, this is pretty cool stuff. And I think it also, like, ties into that theory I had about the shells being, like, you know, cursed objects that are, like, the one ring, basically, where it, it, um, uh, it, it enthralls people. Probably not enthralls, that's probably not the right word, but you know what I mean, it just, like, it, it gets them, and then they want it. They want it bad. Uh, so they killed him, and, and set sail, and then, and then just ate shit the whole time they're they're trying to sail for three days and didn't make it but a few hours the mermaids found them somehow in the great wide ocean the mermaids found them immediately and then started killing them all and the mermaids had a couple of shells no the mermaids had one shell with them and two of the mermaids were shellless uh and then the Formosan did his magic trick to knock out the mermaids, but then everybody was dead except Nichols. So Nichols hauled the mermaids onto the boat because he was like, oh shit, these are pretty cool monsters that would would be like a great find, and I could make money off of that. Uh, and then he got the third shell, which I guess as far as anyone was aware, there was just the two because they didn't know there was two in the chest. Um, yeah, and then, and then the mermaids killed a few people as they were hauling them into the lazarette. And then Philip Dahl, for some reason, like, knew shit about the, the curse and the shells, and I guess this guy here that he killed, he was one of the ones, like, helping haul the mermaids into the lazarette, so he probably saw the shell, or maybe the mermaid, like, whispered in his ear, and probably, like enthralled him as well and Philip Dahl had to had to stop him 
Uh, and that's probably what happened there, I'd imagine. And then we keep going. And then, yeah, after the lightning strike, after a little bit, monsters start coming onto the ship to get the mermaids out of the laser, to break them out, to set them free. Because, like, one of them here, one of the dialogues here says, uh, I think it's later. Yeah, they make for the lazarette, secure the hold. So they're they're trying to they're not just attacking the ship. They're not just mindless monsters. They're trying to break the mermaids out of the ship. But they fail and they die. And so then the Kraken comes to finish the job. And everybody gets gets beaten up and and squished and blown up and shot and and clubbed and, and crushed and thrown overboard. A lot of people die. And then, like, I think during... Let's see here. I guess this is kind of like throughout the whole thing, isn't it? Because they locked up Philip Dahl pretty much immediately. With the, the mermaids. Um... So he would have, this would have been like before the doom, wouldn't it? I, I s seems like it. Philip Dahl, they put everything in here. For some reason, they put the chest in here as well. I guess because like the captain and, and the good guys realized that the shells were like super cursed and it was probably best to keep them locked away from the rest of the crew. Um, so Phil Dahl, I it seems like this probably happened before like all the attacks. Uh just randomly decided to reach into the, the Quicksilver and burn the shit out of his arm, but he managed to pull the shell out, and I'm not really sure what he was thinking or like what he was trying to accomplish. But he got the shell out of the chest and then just fucking died there. And it was the the saddest line. I've ever heard. I mean, good. That was, that was the way he said that was, it really, really fucked me up. That was sad. Uh, and then the captain gets fucking pissed during the, during the doom with the Kraken attacking and starts murdering the mermaids trying to get them to leave the ship. Um, and I don't really know what, like, what, I don't know what stops the captain here. Maybe, maybe the captain did his grim work and it, it worked. Maybe the... Maybe they did actually call off the Kraken, the final, the final surviving mermaid. Maybe she actually did call off the Kraken. And then after the Kraken left, the captain was like, okay, Martin, we got to get this bitch off of our ship. So he had like some of the survivors um, just give it the fucking shell and toss it overboard because they didn't want to deal with it. They just wanted to live. And then Martin Parrot died. That's what I'm gonna go with, probably. Yeah, and then and then the captain was probably like, okay, a bunch of you can just leave because we're not in good shape and things are going really bad and uh and you probably need to get out of here. So I imagine that like leaving the ship was probably uh sanctioned by the captain, I would I would guess. And then Clestal died, and they were talking mutiny down there. And then a whole bunch of... A whole bunch of hell broke loose. Uh, because of the mutiny talk. The people escaped back back there. Brennan, Brennan got revenge. And they escaped. And then at the very end... 
uh, like the remaining people were like, Give us those shells. I don't know. I might be, I might be misreading stuff. I mean, I'm probably misreading stuff. But then it was just the captain, and he just committed suicide because his wife was dead, and his ship was ruined, and all of his crew was dead. And that's the end. And then it just, and then I guess the mermaid actually, like, kept her end of the bargain, and, and like, pushed the ship back to, to, I don't even know where we are, <laughs> to be honest with you. Back to England or something? I don't know. That's my that's my synopsis for how I understood the story. I'm probably wrong in a lot of areas, but ultimately I don't think it really matters because it's just a fucking game and <laughs> and they left a lot up to interpretation. Anyway, that's the nature of the game. So I don't know. It was fun. It was it was so fun. Never played a game like it for my dad. Okay. I'm just gonna skip the credits. I don't got time for credits. I don't got time for credits. I I love and respect everybody that worked on the game, but I don't want to watch the credits. So, <laughs> so yeah, good work though. Damn good job. Damn fine work. All right. Well, that's the return of the Oberdin. That's the final episode for the second time, which I'm still super upset about but this is this is you know this is the best i could do um i hope it wasn't too disappointing that i had already played through this section uh but yeah live and learn i'll be sure i'll be sure to check my audio um every time from now on for the next like probably three videos and then I'll get lazy and stop doing it again and then the next time Windows updates I'll have I'll just ruin another video and get really upset about it <laughs> but never change <laughs> but never change that's that's my motto that's my go-to all right well anyway not quite sure what I'm gonna play next but I've got a few things lined up and um, I might just I might just play a little bit more doom i feel like nobody that watches this series is is probably watching doom very few people probably are but um i think i might just 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 hang out with with doom for just a little bit just a few days before i start the next series whatever that might be um okay i'm gonna leave thanks for watching i'll see you later bye bye